we've got a thank you to DC House Howard. They've been kind enough to send us a lithium battery for us to try and review. So I'm going to unbox it. You've got two of them because the van that we've got has got two gel batteries, which are super duper heavy. And they've sent us two to try. So let's have a little look at what's in the box. Mind and fingers as we go. Nicely packed. Mm -hmm. I think I noticed straight away that is the weight. About 11, 12 kilograms. So that's going to make one huge difference to the loading in the van. Please excuse the dogs running backwards and forwards. Yeah, we are um, in the house trying to prepare to go away. Now, these do have on the box this way up. It's probably for storage because with a lithium battery, what you can do is put it on its side, on its bottom, it will work whichever way you choose to store it, as long as you keep the terminals safe from uh, touching each other. Anyway, this is what we've got from DC House. A Life PO4 battery, lithium battery. So let's open this one. Gently across the top. Just in case there's uh, anything underneath. And of course the difference with lithium batteries is they've got slightly different terminals. Normally on a traditional battery you've got the round terminals, these have got screw types. So that might need a little bit of modification, but we'll see. There's ways around it. With it. So it's really well packed, no issues there. So we've got the foam pad in. Comes in a plastic wrap as well. Sturdy box, really good. And let's get it out. Sorry, I'm working from an angle because there's a great big poodle down there. <laughs> Isn't it? Oh, and part, there's two. Yeah. Oh, hello, it's a big Will. one and a, a little one. Will's come to help too. Pippa likes to stay close. So there we go. Out it comes. Ooh, so it's a lot smaller, exactly. isn't it? That is really small, that's impressive. Wow, I mean, that's half the size, maybe? Package, package. Yeah, I reckon the ones I've just taken out are about 22, 24 kilograms each. Wow. So yeah, half the weight. Well, I've just read on the box, 11.5 kilos. Well, there we go. So we've probably taken 25 kilograms out of the bag. Wow which is quite a difference. At the moment with our van, we're dropping so much weight. So that's it. That's what they sent us, very kindly, thank you. So as you can see, it's 12.8 volts, most of the 12 volts, but that's specific 12.8 lithium, 100 amps. So we've got two of them. So we've got 200 amps of lithium going into the van and it tells you all about it there. 2,000, uh, <coughs> 1,280 watt hours. Yeah, so we've got 4,000 cycles of charge. Yep. 10-year lifespan. Well, Perfect. It depends on how often you use it, of course. But, well, um, we use it a yeah. lot, don't we? Yeah. Lightweight, very lightweight. I mean, that is one of the things that is really good. That is, that's a one-handed battery. Go wow. One-handed battery. Yeah, Brilliant. that's amazing. I mean, yeah. even I can lift them easily, so... Uh... And it's a deep cycle. With lithium, you can really run them quite low. They take a great charge on them as well. What have we got uh, on the top there, then? Here, what's this? Oh, this is just some instructions telling you how to just, do it. Just, just your instructions and fitting. Mm -hmm. Even okay, more. Okay, and back your here. data sheets. So it tells you about its discharge and discharge. Don't yeah. charge below zero. It's in the cab of the van, so it's never going to be below that. No. Um, it also says keep it warm in cold weather. Again, it's inside the van, but it's something to be mindful of. Yeah. If you're doing a conversion, high temp may reduce the battery cycle. Okay, so we don't want the temp above 60 degrees. Well, if it's above that, we're cooking as well, so we won't be in there. Okay, there's a couple of points on there for safety. It's not an engine start battery. This is just a leisure battery. You're meant to use it within the relative voltage and current settings, which is why I've actually bought now a B2B charger. So it will be at charging at its maximum efficiency. You can charge them one by one, but what I'm going to do is link them together. I'll show you how that goes afterwards. If the battery is swollen, you just disconnect it. It's, it's just safety features, but it's, it's good to see them on there. And you can charge the battery at least every six months because they do last a long time. So 
Yeah, it says charge it every six months. It'll be charged when we choose to, because I've got a switch on the dashboard, I can choose which batteries I want to charge. The vehicle battery is going to stay as it is. That's just lead acid. That's perfect, but this is going to be a really good bit of kit to have in the van. It's a total game changer, as they call it. And there's your data sheet here. So I think, initial thoughts, it's wrapped very well. It's been packed, but the main thing for me is the weight. That is just fantastic. The weight of a battery. I do that with the ones I've just taken out. They are in excess of 20 kilograms. Wow. That's really good. So let's say it looks the part. Let's go and see if it does the part. So that's the old one. And behind it is the new one. Is the new one. Now I know you can get all different shapes and sizes of the batteries, but this is what we've been sent. So we're going to go in there and make it fit. Now it's probably a couple of centimetres higher than the last one but there is a little bit of room to play with but again you can see yeah it's slightly bulkier in some dimensions but this thing <laughs> yeah you won't be carrying that with one hand would you i'd say that this is easily a third of the weight of that wow yeah so you, you you've got about 25 30 kilograms in that battery so times we, two. Times two. So we've dropped roughly 40 kilograms, I reckon. But we'll, we'll, well get... I'll go and Google that and we can work out exactly what we're dropping. Yeah. So, uh, Redders has just put the batteries in place. As you can see, they just fit. Uh, he's off to get the battery clamp now to hold them into position. But obviously, it's um, freed up an awful lot of space underneath there because... Uh, they're a fraction of size of those massive things we had before, which reminds me, I must Google and see how much they weigh because these are 11 and a half kilos each. So uh, what's that? 23 kilos in total. And I'll see how much the other two weighed. So I've just looked up how much the old batteries weighed each. How much do you reckon? Oh, they were at least 25 kilograms, weren't they? They were actually 26. Oh, 26 each, whereas these two together are 23. Wow. So, not a bad weight loss. We've had a, a wrestle, and it's uh, warm today, but there we are. So the batteries are in, as we've seen, and the issue is because we're actually down on the floor of the vehicle, where do I clamp it to? Now it's going to be secured in place from the top by the seat base so I'll make sure that the terminals are properly covered so there's no metal part exposed on those. So the only way I could do it was putting together a battery clamp that I used on my stag when the battery was in the boot. Now I've put the battery in the front I had a, a spare clamp so what I've done I've actually put it into the frame of the chair so you can see here it's bolted at the back on here on the bar Mm -hmm. It's clamped on the front all the way across there and it's pulled in tight because I can adjust it here, here and here. So these are just joiners but there's play in them. So these batteries are now rock solid, they're not going anywhere, they're not going up. Down, sideways, forwards, upways, they're in there solid so I'm happy with that. So all I've got to do now is, because the terminals are slightly different, that's the connectors I need. But that's the connectors I don't need. Easy job. <laughs> yeah, okay. I could do that. Easy job. All you're doing is replacing an end. Yeah, well, I've got ends. I've got shrink wrap, so I just need to go now and configure. Because I think from memory, um, where's the positive? There's the negative terminal. So that's the negative terminal. So that needs changing as well. That was on there. So that actually, that's all right. I can probably get away with that. So it's now just a case of making sure the terminals all fit. Because when you put these together, you've got to have a negative on this battery, or that one, but either or. The negative goes there from the vehicle, and the positive goes there. So you're using the energy from both batteries. And all you do then is you leapfrog across to get the power from both. So I'll put a positive there, a negative there and then just do a little leapfrog between the two terminals. And that will 
make them joined completely or that, that joins them completely so one gets depleted no. and the other one so both no. will be used equally they'll be used in tandem right perfect so good so we're getting there they are solid i put a section of foam in front of the batteries to protect the wiring yep so uh yeah let me just go off into my little cave and continue on with the next bit because the actual screws for these batteries because the, these batteries come with them they're really good mm. that's it simple low profile little all screws. right See that? yeah lovely okay that's a hell of a lot neater isn't it it's neater it's in i've changed the adapters so they were the usual type battery adapter these clamps as you can see mm -hmm. cut them off use a section of heat straight heat shrink so they're back on again so that is the main positive for the leisure battery yeah that's the jumper yeah that's the main negative mm -hmm. and that's the jumper so it's just creating its circuit loop right so that's two batteries there gadget mm -hmm. 13.15 volts in there now just to show you can you zoom that i don't know if you'll pick it up with its flicker and everything yeah, else I should do. if i flick the charger that's 13.14 so that's increasing 13 sorry 13.23 so all i was going to say is that's not enough voltage for a lithium battery yeah i know that but it's enough because i'll be fitting the b2b tomorrow yeah so i've broken the back of the job if i don't want this to charge i just pull the fuse out mm -hmm. it's as simple as that but we'll give it a test tomorrow night yeah we don't have to put any charge in them mm -hmm. and when i get the b2b in what it'll mean is it'll run uh, more efficiently and give it the voltage it needs okay. for lithium because the charger I've got under the seat under me is either gel or lead acid. It's not designed to charge these. Right. So now I'll turn the charge off so it's isolated and that's just put the charge back into the leisure battery. Right, okay. So they're working perfect. They're wired in, no problem at all. So I just need to get a plastic cap on these. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That needs making better, that was how we had it. So I'll, I'll put a piece of heat shrink on that uh, and put it back together. So that's the batteries installed and tested and they are working beautifully. We are really, really pleased with them. So why would you change um, if you already have lead acid batteries or gel batteries? Well, the simple thing here is lithium batteries have a very long life cycle. The biggest thing, the thing that we love the most is the weight. It's a fraction of the weight. And in fact, they're about a third of the weight of the batteries we had in there before. And the depth of discharge, where well, you can go 99% of the lithium battery is usable. Whereas a lead acid or an AGM battery, you actually can only take it down to 50%, which means when you think you have a certain amount of power in a battery, you actually don't. You only actually have 50% usable power before you need to start charging it back up again. Since we've installed the batteries, I've installed a number of Victron devices and each one puts power into the batteries. So you've seen that I've put a DC to DC and a solar just to make sure I've got enough charge for the lithium because they're such powerful batteries, they need a powerful input. So to monitor that, I've installed a shunt now, I always thought a shunt was something to do with a train, but I've now realised it can tell me all sorts of information about the two batteries. It's telling me on this app, the voltage at them at the moment is 13.52 volts. Now, the perfect voltage with them is 13.6, but we've currently got two fans on at the moment. So we're drawing 0.9 amps. We're pre pretty much in equilibrium because we've got solar coming in and we've got 10 days so if i didn't do anything and i just sat here in the sun it says that it's between infinite and 10 days so i'm assuming infinite is just saying you're not going to run out of power so the batteries are really impressive the power in these batteries topped with the solar in the chargers is as you can see on this app it flashes now and again infinite power yeah of course that's not true it's got to be built with solar or the charger but as you can see that's where I'm at. It also tells me 
the amount of charge in there. There's an awful lot of information there about the batteries themselves. But ultimately, this app is telling me it's 100%. It hasn't dropped below. They really are powering two fans continuously throughout the day. There we go, look, it's got 10 days to infinite. So it's gonna last a long time. And in addition, the solar, that's trickling down. There's the data. It's given me 42 watts at the moment. There's a lot more up there, but what happens when the batteries through the Bluetooth are saying, I'm almost full up, stop sending me power. It reduces the amount of solar it takes. But this also gives me the information on the battery as well. So it's currently in its float state, which means these batteries are just trickle charging to keep them topped up. And they have been an excellent addition to this van. We've saved weight, we've gained so much power. Yep, the only downside is, and it's, it's a positive downside, you need to upgrade your chargers for lithium. But once you've done it, that's it. We're on lithium for the rest of our life. Really is a top bit of kit. And also, thanks to DC House, you can look on their website and it gives you all of the information on how to install the batteries. I've installed mine in parallel. There's a number of ways you can do it, but with two battery, parallel is the best. But all the information is there. The warranty on the batteries, the size, the power. There's a, there's a multitude of different sizes of batteries you can get. You can see how I installed mine on the vlog. It really is super simple. The price on these batteries is amazing. You need to look at our description because these two batteries cost less than two AGM batteries. They are amazing. They're at a great price. So if you compare what these offer compared to the competitors, you'll see the price on these is amazing. 